Hi, this is Dr. Schmel from the Functional Neurology Center, and I'm going to give you an introduction to what we're going to be talking about August 3rd through the 7th in the Technologies and TBI mini-series. So we're going to start off with actually reviewing what we look at diagnostically in our office. So we're going to be talking about VNG, which is basically technology that we use to graph your eye movements. So in graphing eye movements, we want to look at, well, what do your eyes look like in the dark? Is there motion? Is there movement? Are they steady? Are they unsteady? Do you feel dizzy? Do you feel like you're rafty or floating? We're trying to figure out, is there a peripheral or a central vestibular component to your symptoms? And after we look at what's going on with your eyes in the dark, then we want to pull your eyes out of the dark and look and see if you can actually keep your eyes steady on one single target. And what we're looking for is, you know, what do your pupils look like? Are they even? Are there any intrusions or oscillations? Do your eyes look like they're steady or are they unsteady? What do they look like in center gaze, left, right, up and down gaze? Is there any end gaze nystagmus? Do your eyes look like there's a slow phase and basically a fast phase? Are there, is there anything that could be going on from a, from a cerebellar component or a central vestibular component? Or maybe there's an issue with how your frontal lobe or how your brain is actually firing down to keep your eyes steady. And then we look at your ability to basically follow a target left and right at various speeds and also in the vertical at various speeds. And these are called pursuits. And with pursuit movements, we're looking to see, I mean, do you have to move your head to get your eyes to follow the target? Are there intrusions on your pursuits? Do you feel symptomatic? Some patients will not feel any symptoms at all, but have their pursuit eye movements be very, very jerky. And that could be a component to your headaches and, and dizziness and other symptoms that you have post uh, head trauma and injury. We're also going to look at your ability to move your eyes rapidly, which are called saccades. And we're looking at, can you hit a target? Do you overshoot? Do you undershoot? All right. Do you have a hard time moving your eyes uh, basically uh, towards the midline or moving your eyes out away from the midline? What does it look like in the horizontal and what does it look like in the vertical? In traumatic brain injury, there's different areas that are affected that can change the ability of your eyes to move rapidly and quickly. And these rapid eye movements give you a good representation of where you are in relation to other objects around you in space. So we need to look at saccades. And then we also looked at optokinetic stimulation. So basically, we move uh, targets in front of you and we're looking at your ability to have a good slow phase and quick phase movement, a refixation movement back to uh, the target as it's going by. A lot of patients with visual vertigo and head trauma will have issues and they have these visual vestibular mismatches and we can pull these mismatches out with our testing and then develop different rehab strategies to make improvements. So that's, that's what we're gonna talk about with the VNG analysis. And we're also gonna be talking about a technology called Right Eye, which is an eye graphing software that we utilize in our office that looks at very similar things to the VNG. It doesn't give you video of your eye movements, but it gives you a very detailed analysis and graphing of what your eyes are actually doing on the targets for circular pursuits, pursuits left and right, up and down, saccades left and right, up and down, and then it add, adds in some cognitive tasks for your reaction times. It actually gives, gives you uh, an IQ score and tells us what areas of the brain most likely are dysfunctional. Is it coming from the brain stem? Is it coming from the cerebellum? Is it the parietal lobe? Is it the frontal lobe? We take that data, we combine that information with what we see on the VNG and with what we see on our bedside examination and what we see with our structural exam to decide, well, where do we jump in first? Do we do you know, more visual rehab? Do we do adjustments? Do we do vestibular rehab? Like what's the perfect uh, combinations of therapies to help get you better? 
We're also going to be talking about uh, B-Trax platform posturography. It's a, it's a program that basically looks at your balance from a flat to a foam surface. And then we'll move your head in different positions and look to see if there's increased sway or abnormal sway. And we're trying to decipher that does your brain know where you are on flat versus foam? Is there a neck component, a vestibular component, or is there a visual component to your balance dysfunction? And we're going to talk about different reaction time uh, testings. One of them is called the DynaVision D2. And the D2 is an interactive light board. The targets light up. <clears throat> and then basically you have to react and go and hit the target. And then it's going to look at your reaction time. And we look at, well, how's your, how's your peripheral visual fields? What do things look like central versus out? Um, are you slow going to the left? Are you slow going to the right? What happens if you make a dual task and you have to think or do numbers and then work with your reaction times? So that's another technology that we'll be discussing. We're also gonna be talking about tilt table testing. And tilt table testing is performed when patients might have underlying autonomic dysfunction. And we're gonna basically put you on a table and we're gonna move you up and we're gonna look at your heart rate, your blood pressure, uh, see if there's any changes from going supine up to the standing position, and we're going to get objective markers on that. So that is uh, basically the, the first talk that we're going to do, which is the, the diagnostic talk. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into just talking about post-concussion symptoms and breaking down the frontal lobe as well as kind of the mechanisms of saccades more in depth. And then we're gonna talk about therapy development and how do we actually figure out what we do. And the great thing is throughout the day, we're gonna give you little tidbits of things that you can do at home to hopefully start to make some improvements with your symptoms, just easy stuff that you can start to do every day. <clears throat> On our last talk, we're actually gonna have Professor Ted Carrick on Monday, and he's gonna be talking about Brain EQ. It's a program that we utilize here in our office for doing assessments, uh, tracking symptoms, but looking at uh, short-term uh, memory, memory recall, uh, looking at balance, looking at visual vestibular function, and he's gonna break that down and how it's um, integrated and how it can be used at home and how it can be used by uh, providers and how this data can objectively give us a better idea and track how you're progressing with your therapy and give us an idea if you're getting worse or if you're getting better and you know, just kind of go through how and why that data is so important for getting people to move in the right direction. On Tuesday, uh, we're gonna talk about our at-home assessment. And with the at-home assessment, we're gonna break down just some simple things that you can start to do to get a better idea of what areas of your brain are dysfunctional. And it's a, it's a great thing to be able to just have some tools at home that you can start doing right away. And throughout the week, we'll give you little tidbits of information that hopefully you can add in to help you get better. And then we're going to do the neuro exam. So then we're going to talk about the bedside neurological examination and go through uh, reflexes, sensory pathways, uh, how we assess for different uh, pain thresholds, how we assess autonomics, how do we check all of the vestibular functions, how do we look at your visual system, what kind of examination do we do to your neck. And just really break that whole exam down and kind of go through how it's very, it's similar to other exams that you've had performed, but how it's different and why uh, we think the way that we do. Uh, later in the day, we're going to talk about autonomic rehabilitation. So we're going to go over dysautonomia and POTS. We're going to go over sympathetic failure, parasympathetic failure, and kind of go through that autonomic system and make sense of it and talk about the actual different therapies that we do to improve your autonomic function. On Monday and Tuesday, uh, later in the day, we are actually going to do Facebook Lives where we'll be able to go on and you'll be able to ask questions with our team and uh, just ask, ask anything and then we'll, we'll try and answer the questions to the best of our ability. On Wednesday, we're gonna talk about pain. So we're gonna talk about all of the, uh, the, the symptoms associated with pain 
We're gonna go through the pathways. We're gonna talk about neurology, structure, and metabolic aspects to pain, and some things that we can do to uh, get people better. Uh, then later that day on Wednesday, we're gonna talk about more in depth about the vestibular system and different therapies that we utilize in the office uh, from very simple things that you can do to more advanced technologies like uh, the gyro stim and different uh, types of things that we might use with virtual reality vestibular stimulation. And then later in the day, we're gonna talk about ocular motor function. So we're actually gonna break down all of the eye uh, movements and go through the pathways and then how we assess them clinically and some different types of technologies that can be used such as uh, focus builder and motion guidance. Um, and we're also gonna do a talk specifically on focus builder with one of the developers that, that goes through what focus builder is, um, why it was developed and what types of programs are available right now. On Thursday, we're going to start off with talking about low-level laser therapy. So we're going to talk about photobiomodulation and how we can shine light on the head to help improve symptoms. And we'll also talk about vagal laser stimulation and how we do low-level laser on the gut. And then we're going to talk about the cervical spine. We're going to talk about cervical spine rehabilitation, how we assess it. And then we also have a talk with a friend of mine, colleague, Dr. Russ Hornstein, he's a chiropractor based out of Europe, and he's going to go through how he adjusts the cervical spine in patients with post-concussion and how it might be a little different than what you uh, currently might have uh, being performed with you. And then we're going to uh, talk about virtual reality. We're going to talk about the use of virtual reality to help with motion sickness and dizziness people who feel disconnected. We're gonna talk about a system called Virtualis, which is developed in Paris. And our office was the first office in the United States to start utilizing this program. And we're gonna break down how we just, how we do it in the office. And then later in the day, we're gonna do a Facebook Live. On Friday, we're gonna talk about lab work. So we're gonna talk about the labs that we use through a company called uh, Vibrant America, Vibrant Labs. And we're going to talk about the neural zoomer panel. We're also going to talk about Cyrex blood brain barrier panel. We'll talk about the gut zoomer. We'll talk about food sensitivities and we'll break down just basic labs and we'll go through, you know, how we need to assess for anemia, infections, inflammation, look at how your immune system is doing, look at your vitamin D levels, look for magnesium deficiencies. Just because you had uh, a brain injury and trauma doesn't mean that you didn't have something going on previous to your brain injury and how it is important to try and identify these underlying metabolic components that could be preventing you from getting better. In our office, many of the people that we see have already had a lot of lab work done and they've come in and we do our rehabilitation, our neuro uh, recovery program but we still want to run new labs to make sure that there's nothing that's being missed. And in our follow-up program, we do a two month follow-up program with email and phone check-ins. We do lab reviews to make sure that we're addressing the metabolic components uh, with different supplementation and nutrition and diet that might be occurring that could prevent you from getting better. Uh, on Friday, we're also going to talk about different outcome assessments with a program called EREPS Online and how by utilizing these different outcome measures, we can track your progress and your recovery to make sure that you're getting better and make sure that there's nothing that's being missed. And then we're just going to do an outro, which will basically kind of review through everything that we talked about during the week. And throughout uh, the week, I'll be taking note of questions that are being asked and hopefully answer a lot of those questions during the Facebook Lives during the week, but then also hit those on the outro. And all of uh, these videos, these are all going to be uploaded throughout the week on our private group, the Brain Health Online Summit. So all you have to do is request to join that group and we'll allow you access. And then each day, these videos are going to be posted and they're all for free. And then we're gonna take these videos and then we're gonna put them onto our YouTube channel. And then it will be listed under the Brain Health Online Summit and the Technologies and TBI mini series. 
And that's it. There's, there's nothing more to the story. We're just giving educational information to help patients and providers get the best care that people deserve uh, to help them get better when, you know, you might just, you might be stuck at a plateau or uh, maybe you're tanking and you just really need help. We're here to provide educational information to help people uh, get better. And there's nothing more to the story than that. So we're looking forward to doing this. If you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out. Info at the FNC.com and we will get back to you. And again, to request, you would go to our clinic Facebook page and you'll see a link for the Technologies in TBI mini series. And you'll see the link to be able to request access for our private group. So we're looking forward to doing this in August and I hope you guys have a great day.